We're good. <laughs> Hello. My name is Slyton, and we're playing today My Friendly Neighborhood. Um, if you haven't seen this game before, think of Resident Evil on Sesame Street. Something like that, and you have a pretty good idea. I have a couple few, a couple commentators back here, if you guys like to introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Nerd. I did the Poppy Run yesterday, and I've ran this game a little bit. I'm Dangerous. I learned the run for this a long time ago, and I never actually submitted it. I should probably do that at some point. <laughs> yeah. All right, and we actually do have one more. A mysterious voice in the sky, if you'd like to introduce yourself. Oh, hello, hello. Uh, my name is John Shemansky, and I am the, uh, the main developer of My Friendly Neighborhood. Developer on the couch. Oh my God. Very exciting. <laughs> Developer on the couch in spirit, uh, but uh, ethereally uh, in voice, yeah. <laughs> Remote is still on the couch. It's okay. All right. Um, we're going to get right into it. Um, I can explain it as we go here. Um, so time won't start until I select the difficulty. So we have a couple seconds here. I will, I'll count it down. All right. We're rolling up in our truck. This is longer than I remember. <laughs> <laughs> All right. In five, four, three, two, one, go. All right. Welcome to My Friendly Neighborhood CEO Percent. This is our 100% version of the run. Um, essentially, we are going to help every puppet in the game that needs help. We need to grab every weapon in the game, and we need to beat the final boss. So first off here, um, John was very nice to put that button for us there that lets us skip the entire intro to the game. Uh, we don't have to go into the hotel, and we can grab our nice shotgun right off the bat. Nice. This is the main weapon we're going to be using for pretty much the entire game. And we do have an extra room to go into here, and this safe has this little secret thing I went too far that will help us in about 10 minutes. The fuse. All right, and the enough ammo to pretty much get through the starting area. So, Dangerous, if you want to help explain what we're going to be doing in this building here. Sure. So this is the first studio area that uh, is kind of like the first main puzzle hub. Uh, and as soon as he gets into the main part of the studio where the filming actually took place, uh, it's, a, it's a giant set, and there's a bunch of like little mini puzzles around where he has to collect uh, little... Uh, children's block tiles that he has to arrange in a certain order in order to obtain a key that is then going to be carried to, or not a key, excuse me, uh, but a crank that is going to be carried to another part of the uh, another part of the game, and that's going to be used to access the next area. All right, and you just saw me pick up the wrench, the weapon I used to just stun our friend Leonard back there. That is one of the main things we're going to be using throughout the game is just hitting the puppets, either whether it's in the back or in the front. And we also picked up the key to get into the main area that Dangerous was talking about. And here we are, the set. So there are, I believe it's four main puppets we're going to be seeing here, and they all have interchangeable voice lines. All absolutely amazing. I yes. recommend if you ever play this game to just sit and listen to them. They have far too many. Agreed. Um, uh, good job, John. <laughs> Some of the most incredible dialogue I've ever heard. And you did see me just walk along a ledge there that doesn't exist. That is a very precise trick of, I'm not precisely sure why, if you walk while just barely looking at the wall, you will walk along a non-existent platform and be able to walk um, over to get a key that we usually wouldn't be able to get uh, without walking around a lot more. And that big bird, we Pearl. just walked, the legally distinct big bird, that Pearl. is Pearl. Pearl really trying to mess your run she, up right she, now. <laughs> she can step on you uh, and deal damage, which uh, is not great, because then I would have been knocked into Junebug, one of the other puppets, and that would have uh, been a very bad start to the run. We only have, I believe, four HP, so it's not a lot to work with. Um, hopefully, we're not grabbed too much. Um, and we are going to walk up here. There is a puppet in a very interesting situation waiting for us in this room over here. So I will you know, let him speak for himself. His mouth actually slightly opens as the water goes down. Nice hey, y'all. I'm Norman. <laughs> <laughs> and I know we have spoken out about it before. Uh, if anybody has played this game and has a favorite puppet voice line, um, please put that in a donation, and Kung Fu will do her best uh, puppet impression of the voice line. 
We talked about this Which, for the record. I am extremely excited to hear. Please do do that. Yes. You're assuming I remember how they all sound exactly, but I'm going <laughs> to definitely Oh, no, no, try. no. Uh, I, I am not assuming that personally. Okay. <laughs> I think that makes it all the more exciting. <laughs> Creative license is very much welcomed here. <laughs> all right. And you did see me pick up the glasses there. Those are going to be the items to help Pearl. Uh, it is a little bit of RNG on where she will be when we need to help her. So we're going to... Hope it's a good location. Otherwise, I kind of just have to run around aimlessly for a little while. Also, the chocolate bar. I get to exp um, nerd. If you want to ex explain what the chocolate bar does. Yeah. So us. the chocolate bar gives Gordon a bit of a no. speed boost. Uh, I'm not sure the exact gap. But I believe it around three chocolate bars. It's like double speed or something like that. Uh, so it's going to help us uh, move right a bit right faster now. through these rooms. Uh, worth noting about the chocolate bar, it lasts for three door transitions or four screens total. Uh, so sometimes we'll use a chalk bar early to set it up for a future room. All right, so we helped Pearl there. She didn't have her glasses. She couldn't see. That's why she was threatening to step on us. She really is nice. Don't worry. All right, so the answer to the block puzzle, in case you were wondering, is neighbor. It's neighbor. We are a Let very nice go. neighbor. Oh, we got neighbor. <laughs> And I did just unload a shotgun shell completely out of the blue. Uh, that is because this route has a very, very precise inventory management. We only really want to manage the inventory twice total in this game. Uh, and if I don't do stuff like that, um, it's going to get a little not fun for me in some places. It's going to be the same with this weapon right here. This is, I believe, the Rolodexer. Very, actually, creative item. It's, as you can see at the top, there's letter Z. It goes through a bunch of letters as you shoot the alphabet. Yeah. Um, I am going to ask for silence here for a second. There is a f nearly frame-perfect trick we're going to hope I get here. No, I didn't get it. Oh, uh, darn. Uh, but you can completely skip having to walk up those stairs, like up towards the stairs over there and up the stairs uh, and enter that second cutscene and just skip right into uh, looking at and grabbing the tape that I just grabbed. The tape itself is, you, is pretty much our stay down item in this game. Um, please work. All right, and Junebug is just going to hang out there for the rest of the run midair. Don't worry, she is okay. She enjoys it. That was slick as heck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you shoot her, and then if you if you tape her real quickly while she's just about to fly away, you can tape her midair, and that's how we that's how we do that. It's not just expedient for speedrunning purposes. It's really funny. It is. Uh, it also also helps uh, make it a bit more consistent because she can just fly all the way down the hallway, yeah. and then you have to waste the time that's all the way exactly walking down why. here. Uh, instead, this way, you just get to walk over there and go straight to the door, and then she get to see her do the funny stance for the rest of the uh, game. We're going to stun the rest of these puppets, and we are now going to enter the one area in the game where frame rate is important. So we are going to turn on VSync, go down to 60 FPS. Uh, we also have in here, this is Ray. This is the next pup we're going to have to help. I got stuck on the stairs. Ray is best boy. Ray is a very, very we good love mechanic. Ray. So if things go well here, I should be able to stun this Norman and walk through him. Nice. Okay. Well done. So that is very, very <laughs> precise. Um, Norman, as you heard behind me, multiplied into about seven different Normans. Um, we used to just juke around him, but that is slow. Um, and a Japanese runner by the name of Kiru Kuro discovered that. Um, I'm going to toss over to Dean, or one of you guys, whoever wants to do it for while I do this puzzle. To explain. Yeah, explain the puzzle. Oh, to explain the puzzle, yeah. yeah. So this is the punch card puzzle. So uh, the nice thing about this is if you understand, if you know the answer to the puzzle, you can just do the punch cards automatically. But each punch, each shape is relative to a certain number, and we're trying to tick those clocks right there on the wall over to a certain number. And so you have to know which shapes correspond to uh, which number. And it's, it's just a quick puzzle you can figure out if you go into another room and, and look at the wall. Wow. Exactly, and we did our first inventory management of the game. Cool. Hopefully, that's 50% of the inventory management we do, provided my ammo is correct. And we are going to enter down here into the main atrium. We're going to come through here a couple times while in the sewer. Norman, luckily, none of these puppets can catch us if we just take a very nice route up the stairs. Another quick thing to note is that, as you can notice, the stairs do slow us down significantly mm -hmm. to walk on them. Uh, which is something that will come into play in a little bit. Actually, that's a good question for, for John. Why the slowdown on the stairs? 
Why? Yeah, you know, that... Good question. Um, you know, there's a bit of, like, non-tangible game feel uh, that you, you, you kind of have to... You, you gotta get across in some way. And walking up and down stairs does take a little bit more time IRL. I thought it would add a little bit of interest to the vertical variety. <sighs> Realism. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You uh, know... Oh, sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, no, you, you were much more important was, than me. Oh, not, not <laughs> even a little bit. No, I, I'm surprised. Stair bouncing as, uh, was such a thing back in the, in the demo speedrunning days. Um, and yet, I, I believe it ended up getting t where you would like go down uh, uh, like at an angle down the stairs and you kind of bounce down them instead of going down directly. Mm -hmm. uh, but I believe it was timed and found out to be no faster. Is, is that correct? Oh, that, oh, that would have to be a slight question because I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. I you am might have to repeat the look. question. I was very focused on walking down that hallway quick. <laughs> uh, you know what? Let's let's yeah. discuss afterward. There For might be sure, a bit yep. of heck that I might be able to. Uh, of do, course. Uh, with. Yeah. So we are <laughs> just walking around grabbing these fuses. Uh, there is a bit of downtime, Kung Fu. If you want to take it away with probably about three donations. Absolutely, you're getting a lot of love right now. So we'll do fifty dollars. So mistakes are high. I get I get the stake spelling. That's good. Hey Sly, it's your boy. While it is true that the last job of the day is always the worst. We can also say the first run of the day is always the best. Try not to get too many ones. <laughs> Thank you. I know him very personally. <laughs> All right. I think this one is a potential puppet phrase, maybe. This is $5 from Brainiac, <clears throat> who says, it's a great day for board games. <laughs> Can't wait to see Slayton versus Norman. <laughs> Thank you, Brainiac. One more. One more. All right. $10 from Adam the Feverish, who says, My friendly neighborhood was a very charming game, and I'm happy to see how it will get broken completely. Perfect. Thank you so much. All right. So Ray can just spawn in that pipe that we just walked past on the left. Um, after we spawned him in that one area um, where we did the Norman multiplying skip, uh, he can just spawn in any of these pipes. Completely RNG, if I believe. Um, and one quick second, I need to focus. Yeah, so he has to plug in uh, four sets of fuses in two different ways. So the first one is uh, Club Diamond Heart Spade. That unlocks one door off to the right. And then the second one is Spade Star Diamond Heart. That one unlocks a door to the left. And we went through the left door first because we are going to go get a very special weapon. I would also like to note he has those notes because I don't know the combination. I know the pattern. <laughs> I have a count in my head. If I mess it up, he had the notes. That fun June little oh. fun little tidbit here. This is technically a sequence break, but this was a sequence break that I really, really wanted to be possible. Um, we actually rerouted a significant portion of the game specifically so you'd be able to go get that extra fuse early so you'd be able to get into this area early so that you would both be able to get this particular weapon that is coming up in a second early but also so that it would be possible to do a fully pacifist run of the game because um, it would be possible otherwise because of the curtain boss. Nice. All right, so what you saw us pick up here is the minigun. And guess what? We're not going to use it. It is not good. But it's required oh, for CEO percent. So it that's is why we required have to get it. for CEO percent. <laughs> I believe it deals one or two damage per shot. Oh, uh, it's less than that. Okay. <laughs> um, so we prefer the shotgun because that is a lot of damage at once. But I guess, but I do know we are going to be able to use it in this next room to create a very funny sound. Since Ray didn't spawn in the main atrium room that we went through, he will spawn in this next room. It is guaranteed as far as my attempts have seen. So I'm just going to be quiet so we can hopefully hear this if he spawns. There we go. My favorite sound in the game by far. <laughs> And I will also note, there's an item you get later in the game, uh, the soda, that you can take that uh, increases your fire rate by a lot. And three sodas in the minigun makes a wonderful noise. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> All right, and that is pretty much it for the sewers with us. Um, we will be coming back, back down here maybe once, uh, yeah, once later, and making sure it wasn't twice. Uh, and we are now entering by far the longest elevator in the game. Kung Fu, we yep. have time for at least a donation. <laughs> All right, let's go. We have $10. This is from the Demented Salad. Hey. He says, 
Always happy to donate to a great cause and very happy to see this wonderful gem of a game being ran on the big screen. Hoping and praying for a good card, card game RNG. And remember, we're all friendly here. Friendly, friendly, friendly. <laughs> we're all friendly here. All right, welcome Ooh, that's to the a good worst enemy game. <laughs> the hand puppets are the worst. Oh, They're so I awful. I fully agree with that, yes. <laughs> we minigun them for, there for a reason. It's just to get them out of the way. All right, and this is going to be our second inventory management of the game, hopefully the last, as long as I do everything correct. And we pick up the first mask there. This whole office building is based around the masks uh, for at least the first bit. A puppet can spawn right there, and he didn't. And that is the only risk to us. Nice. And we are going to be doing here the first kind of stair skip. Um, there we go. Nice. Well Walking done. Walking up that railing is <laughs> just faster uh, than walking up those stairs. <laughs> Uh, again, found by the wonderful Japanese runner, Kirokuro. Um, amazing person. I was talking with him before the run. Um, I've been bouncing back and forth with him with NMG. We've, we're really close and amazing guy. Also, Demented Salad. I want to talk about him quickly. He, right. Oh, what a, a homie. major person in the game. Uh, has run the game, uh, run CEO on Hotfix, I believe, before. And yeah. all right. Good to hear from you, Salad. Amazing to hear from him. All right, so we since we did just use three ammo, we got to pick up three ammo right there. Again, that was a routing change. Uh, we used to just have to juke all the puppets in that theater room, um, but discovering that, that we can just grab the ammo there, waste a couple seconds doing it, completely fine. I will have to explain this later. We are grabbing a safety health for a very specific reason okay. that if you know, no, you uh, know. I, no, no, no. I want to put in my pro, <laughs> my pro board game propaganda right here. I swear during testing, 90% accuracy of, of success. I, apparently, I'm the only one. I think that I might be able to just swoop in and take the record. We call that. <laughs> what do you we call that the dev skew? All right, we are gonna <laughs> grab this mask through the wall here, grab the chest piece, and or the, and grab another safety health because John is lying. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. You also say that he cheats, and I I can guarantee you he only cheats once. Okay, so we need to explain what's going on here. So in, in the next room after this, uh, we're gonna play a board game that is 100% RNG, no matter what John says, uh, and you basically get you have to play through this little mini game of. Uh, playing cards to move a piece around the board, but you can instantly lose the, the game if you get the wrong cards. Uh, and the, this, you have to complete this. This is the only way to get that key that Norman's holding this under his hand. This is a winning. This isn't. There's no way you can lose this. Okay, no, he can just keep playing threes. So, okay, to explain it, the Norman spaces, the brown ones, you get to pick up a card. The purple ones, you have to play only, you can only play ones. The yellow spaces, you have to play the top card of the deck. And the green spaces, you insta lose. Um, just a quick story. Um, I came back to playing this game after. He is catching up, oh, John. No. I came back to playing this game. We're going to have to rely on RNG here. We might yeah, lose the game. Well, it is completely I will possible. Say this, this looks very RNG. -like. Ooh, let's go. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Oh, it's like no way it's yes. coming. Oh my god. That was. <laughs> and we drink the safety health without having to use it. All right. I think last run that I watched, I think, was six failures or something, four failures before, before it got uh, a successful run through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. my, my BPM is in the triple digits right now. <laughs> that was insane. In no way did I expect that to happen. So we did just pick up um, the next mask and also a grenade. The grenades are going to be very helpful for us in a couple minutes. Uh, we will have a boss coming up, and we have a pretty good explanation for them, or a pretty good uh, way to deal with them here. So the next here is the mask puzzle we've been collecting the entire time. They all have different faces because they all have different emotions. George is angry. That's the only important one. <laughs> and now we're going to pick up the dice. Good test of my aim, and it's okay today. Eh, you missed one. Spend some time okay. at Kovac. This is one of those fake ledges again that we just do to avoid <laughs> these stairs. <laughs> and um, the first time I went through this room here, you saw, uh, this room over here, you saw me deal with the um, hand puppet by wrenching it. Oh my gosh, is that tough. Ooh. And I just shot those up. Ooh, that nice. is that was, super hard to yeah, do Yeah, that was a little close on, t on timing there. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, dangerous, if you want to explain this one. Yeah, so I never remember these numbers. This is the thing that kind of kept me from really grinding this run. So the dice puzzle you have to do is 4, 1, 6, 2, 5, 4, 3, 1, 2, in that order. Uh, and you have to switch them around because the opposite side of the dice is the one that is uh, corresponding to the solution of the puzzle. That's Goblet, by the way. Yeah, our first introduction <laughs> to Goblet, the puppet we are going to help in the theater. Hopefully, this didn't. It's only worked out for me once in practice today. A little a railing jump we can do here as well, hopefully. Oh, we got it. Nice. All right, yeah. you can just pop up over that railing and just skip having to walk around. Saves about two seconds. Very nice to do, though. It's very fun. Um, also, coming around the front on those puppets I just hit, um, hitting them from the front is very hard to do because you have maybe about 0.12 seconds to hit them before they are invulnerable to be stunned from the front, and they will just grab you, and it is not a good day for anybody except for them. And I'm so sorry, we don't want that. If anybody's interested, uh, how this works is if you hit a puppet before they've gone through a small timer after they've seen you, it'll automatically stun. Same as if uh, you hit them from the back, I believe. Even if they are aware of you, I believe that'll stun them. Not that that would really ever happen, but... <laughs> okay. Except for Junebug and Pirate Cove. Mm, yes. Enter it. Is that true? That is mm -hmm. true. That one does, will stun sometimes, but not always. <laughs> All right, in case you're wondering, well, she's still hanging out there. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> she's still singing, though, so it's okay. She's singing about bubbles. She's having a good time. I told you she likes it. Yeah, she's vibing. Yeah. <laughs> she's flying. She has no choice. She's tied up. John, I do have a True. question for you that I think it's a burning question we've all been wondering. I waited till so far oh. in the run to ask it. Oh why why yes. do we have a flip weapon button? <laughs> What is this for? <laughs> this does okay. nothing. Okay, wait, wait, wait. That's, first of all, that is completely untrue. It does do something. Um, but second of all, would you rather that you didn't? Okay, Ooh. no, it is the dedicated ADHD button. This is correct. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You got to have something when you're not doing anything, right? <laughs> No, but it is candidly untrue that it does not do anything because if you're on the last shot of the stenographer and you flip and you fire halfway through the uh, halfway through the flip, it'll do four times damage. Nobody what? knew this. Yes, this is totally a thing, 100%. Huh. Oh, there's a yeah. reroute that's about to happen. <laughs> oh, yeah, there is. <laughs> also, welcome to the first boss of the game. This is Curtain Call. And fight's over. All right, that was Curtain Call. Hi. <laughs> Two nades, that's all it takes. You do have to you know, wait a little bit because that, while she's screaming at the very start, I believe she's invulnerable and she can just take out a couple of the grenade hits with that and not die. Do you know how much time we spent making that boss? <laughs> do you know how quickly he just defeated the boss? Uh, yeah, yeah <laughs> I know. Do you know how much that hurts me? <laughs> All right, we are going to help Goblet here. We are going to place a film in there, and we can see she walks up there all sad. I got turned around. Oh, yeah, we had a lore question about this, John. We do. Oh, Why okay, is Goblet yes. sad? Nobody knows. <laughs> Oh, Goblet is sad because there's sad things happening on the screen. Or do you mean just in general? Like, just, why is Goblet just existential? Uh, but both? Yeah, I guess the question's like, why is showing her the film and then comforting her in the theater helping her for the good ending? <laughs> Okay, this is a very this is a very complicated discussion that would probably be outside of the bounds of. Okay. Of the, but let's just say, Goblet feels poorly, and then is shown that there might be more to uh, to uh, to life than just the pain that she sees. Simple simple as that. All right, and in case you're wondering, we went in there, patted her on the back, and said, "You're good." The, and then we just kind of yeah, leave. The tonal shift just yeah. now from John to Slyton. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to be that person. I'm very sorry. There's, there's existential dread and horror and terrible things in the world. So we went in and patted her on the back and said, it's all good, no worries. <laughs> See ya. Existentialism done quick. All right, welcome to the next area of the run. Got that. This is the garden. Uh, we're going to have some fun here. The cardboard cutouts we just walked out, they do play a part in a puzzle later on. Luckily, we know the combination of the puzzle, so we don't have to deal with it. But I think it is a very well-designed puzzle. Uh, it is. Props to John. Agreed. Well, thank you. Uh, so we are going to walk. I took a wide line there, because if you walk too close to those stairs, even though you don't walk on them, they will detect you on them, and you get slowed down. <laughs> what was that? 
Oh, that was a dog, I think. Was it? I mean, you know, it could be anything. It GDQ. looked like a run killer. Oh, you know what? <laughs> you might be right. <laughs> All right, we're entering the greenhouse. Uh, we're going to grab a key in here that is going to help us pretty much get into the last rooms of the game we're going to need. Um, and go. we're going to go back down into the sewers after this and help Ray. Um, but a little bit of this is mostly just fetch stuff for a little bit. Kung Fu, you have probably time for two donations? Okay, great. Um, first of all, just, just a quick update. We are 20% of the way in now to that solve the world's most difficult puzzle for Luffy 2. So I just want to like keep a heads up for you all. And I learned a little bit more about it. It's a sliding block puzzle. And the optimal solution for this puzzle is 116 moves long. 116 moves. I'm just saying. So, so we are 20% now. For over 1,400, we need 7,000 um, dollars for that. So, I, I want to see 116 moves. Um, we have like half the run of the next run to get that in. Anyway, quick donation for you. 50 dollars from Mershon. I'm gonna try. I'm just gonna try a different voice. I'm just gonna keep trying things. Okay. This one goes. D is for donation. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. That was really good. Okay, nice. <laughs> uh, you have time for probably one more. Okay, awesome. Uh, Twenty dollars from Hippie Nader who says hey. we're all friendly here. Friendly, friendly, friendly. Good luck on the run, Slayton, and I hope we get to see a first try board game, which we did, which is uh, did. pretty wild. Well. Hippie Nader is another runner of this game, the main any percent runner, and actually the reason we run uncapped frame rate in this game. I've been waiting to explain this because it's really odd. Also, I'm going to just waste ammo here for no reason. Um, so, we run when we run normally, it is load removed. We have the timer in the top right corner, which is load removed as well. So it doesn't affect that at all. What it does affect is the trend. <laughs> when you go through the door, what it does affect is the time it takes you to go to go from the finishing the door sequence to the black screen. It, increase, it, um, it decreases that time ever so slightly, and that just, complete, just piles up over the run, and it's just free time save. Huh. Yeah, the, the door entrance animation is shorter, but the time spent in the loading screen is not. Yep. That was huh. a very odd thing. Very, only found out uh, very recently, too. I did I, not mean to hit him that much. Whoops. I have, I have no explanation for that. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little code dive and see, see if I can figure out what that would be. It is mainly um, used for the very final door of the game. It was noticed the biggest. Oh. For your research. Oh, wait. No, I think I know why that is. Okay. Oh. Uh, yeah, I can... I can talk to you about that later. Yeah. Slayton, did you just shoot a dog? I we don't know that it's a dog. It looks like a dog. It you know a lot of things look like a dog. It barks like it's a dog. It's got six limbs just like dogs do. That I, it looked like a dog as I'm saying. This runs not paid to approved. <laughs> All right. This is the first time entering the for the um, entrance of the hotel here which really is um, where you're supposed to go immediately. Uh, there isn't a, the first cutscene of the game should be there. I don't think I've also explained what the goal of the game was and what we're doing. Oh, yeah. um, we <laughs> are hired as a repairman <laughs> to come in and stop this old studio uh, that has just somehow turned back on and is broadcasting over current channels. So we have to go up and climb to the very top of the building and turn off the... Transmitter? You transmitter up there. Transmitter. Yes. Also, by the way, this entire area is optional. You don't actually have to do this for any percent, but since we're doing what is effectively 100%, we have to come here to do this. Also, if you're interested in any percent, that run is absolutely crazy. <laughs> Nowhere near this run at all. Um, I recommend looking at it. Uh, any percent is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would say that. You're the developer. I know. It makes me so sad. <laughs> we also have an interesting trick coming up here if I can get it. We're going to hope. Oop. There we go. Ah. GG. Very good. That is a very, very precise um, walk. You have to walk up to that ledge. Um, when it prompts you to hit E, hold forwards and right and turn to the right just un just enough to get back on the platform, but not too far. That'll prompt you to hit E again. And then drop down onto the little scaffolding area and just go right over. 
saves a few seconds, and it looks cool. So we like it. <laughs> you said that like Norman. <laughs> we like it. <laughs> when you play enough of this game, uh, you get the voices. You hold forward and right, and then you hold back, and you like it. <laughs> After a while, the voices accurate. just get ingrained in our brains. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, again, another bit of this is probably just a little bit of fetch uh, if Kung Fu wants to hit us with probably two donations. Sure thing. So we have $10. This is from um, Askan Yi who says, I'm donating for the phrase designated ADHD button. <laughs> I love when there's an in-game fidget. Honestly, I agree with that. I really enjoyed doing that too. Yes. That was really fun, so if that makes you feel better, Tom. Um, <laughs> okay, we've also got $10 from Abu Kamu, who says, hey. uh, I'm so happy to see this game on a mainline GDQ. Slayton, thanks for helping a community dream come true. And John, always a pleasure to see your passion in making this game. Be gentle on Slayton. Best of luck and shout out to the lovely couch as well. Thank you, Abu. Yeah, good to hear from you, Kamu. Kamu's the homie. Oh. Yeah. I'm totally. looking for more puppet impressions, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up is the playground puzzle that we were talking about earlier. Hopefully, I'm able to get it. Um, if dangerous, you have the combination for it. If uh, you want to explain a little I, bit. Of I it. do not have the combination. Oh, you don't it. have the combination. But but you could explain how we do the puzzle yeah, normally. Yeah, it, honestly, explaining the combination wouldn't even be all that interesting. So basically, you'll see that he puts all of these little pogs into the playground layout like that in order to open that door. And the solution to the puzzle is actually all these cardboard cutouts laid around the hedge maze. And uh, the first time I was playing through this casually, it took me an hour to figure that out. Uh, an hour? Yeah, it was, you said it tripped you up it, a whole hour? It, it took me well. <laughs> it took me a while because I kept putting some of the pogs in the wrong place. Also, we're helping the probably puppies. <laughs> I'm sorry that I'm not as smart as you, John. <laughs> <laughs> we are also now coming up to the apparently most hated puzzle amongst casual <laughs> players and no, I, sometimes I speedrunners. Yes. <laughs> so what we were pick what we were picking up was a bunch of different items. I believe it was trumpet polish. Um, I can't remember the rest of them. <laughs> uh, there was film, film solution. Film developer. Film developer. Yeah. Thank you. And then one more. And then we put in those cases. And then we need to turn everything on and uh, press those buttons for a very exact amount of time. If you are if you hold it too long, too um, too like too short or too long. It will just break on you. The animation for it breaking takes about three seconds. You have to re completely restart it. Not For fun. the record, it has gotten two patches less specific. <laughs> <laughs> the timing, that is. <laughs> All right, and we are now entering what is essentially going to be the last area of the game. We're going to clear that purple goo that we barely knew was there because we've only been in this room once and go up the elevator to the penthouse, which I think is my favorite area of the game, just because of how it's designed. You will see this in a second. Everything is cardboard, and this is absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Osha would like a word. <laughs> also, just so everybody knows, I am a very good chef, and welcome to my cooking stream. <laughs> this, is the this is the kitchen. I'm going to teach you a few recipes here. So when you chop milk, what do you get? That's well, a right, banana. a banana. A banana, yes. Obviously. I put the banana on the stove. That is the incorrect <laughs> thing to do. Do not do that. I don't recommend it. I d put the banana in the... Oh, my God. Stop. <laughs> I'm a trained chef somewhere. Don't worry, probably. I can't breathe. So the can <laughs> for the stove make chili. The tomato in there in um, the microwave makes hot sauce, I think. Put them all together in a fridge. That's right. It's a key. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why, why is it a key? Yeah, don't try that in your kitchens at home. Oh, no. That's not oh. our favorite thing to deal with. Die, please. Thank you. All right. Oh, I didn't place the second one. I just tried to hit her too early. We took damage. Luckily, we've been at full health this entire run. Somehow, that was my first hit. And this is the most creative uh, computer you will ever see in a game. <laughs> Like uh, from the other room. Okay, I, I have to interject this here. That is a computer. When I was a kid, we had, you know, reasonably strict uh, screen time limits, but I could not imagine not playing on the computer, so I would make little paper computers like that for myself and pretend I was playing video games. Um, that I couldn't not put it in. Oh, right? my God, that's <laughs> adorable. Oh, my God. Yeah, isn't it cute? Yeah. 
All right, so what we're doing in the penthouse is we are grabbing the puzzle pieces to help Arnold, the last puppet we have to help in the game. Uh, the puzzle pieces are all around. We picked up two so far. One was in the cabinet we just grabbed, and one was in the one of the cases, or the, the chest in the room next to the computer from John's childhood. And fun, <laughs> fun fact, uh, Arnold is the only one that you help in the NMG run, like in just regular gameplay. You can skip helping all of the other puppets, but you cannot skip Arnold. That's correct. Um, dangerous. We just went through the puzzle. If you want to, yeah, we just, we just we did. We went through the whole thing. Through it. So there's a couple of uh, little uh, logs, like journal entries, that you can find to get the answer for the puzzle. But you have to go up to the shapes puzzle, the fox puzzle, the color puzzle, the flag puzzle, the fruit or puzzle. I keep saying puzzle. Painting. Uh, the the shape painting, fox painting, color painting, flag painting, and then the fruit painting in that order. And you have to push those buttons in order to uh, get the last painting to uh, to open and you get the last puzzle piece there. Nice. Yes. All right. I love this. <laughs> this is so a cool much. thing yeah. we do. We open the inventory. <laughs> like, really. It doesn't really do anything. We just like to know where the soda can is for later so we don't have to stumble around the inventory looking for it because the soda can <laughs> uh, pretty much acts as a um, chocolate bar that we're going to use later. Welcome to the longest ladders uh, in, in existence. This is Bloodborne. We have ladders. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> fun fact about uncapped frame rate. Thank yes. you, Hippie Nader, for making us run on uncapped frame rate. If you spam E too fast at the top of any of these ladders, you will teleport to the bottom, including this one that takes like 30 seconds Please to climb up. Please I do it. I did it in the practice room earlier with Please him watching. Please do it again. <laughs> yeah. I'm not intentionally going to try and <laughs> do, do it, it again. But, but I, I have, do have so to many donations it. to read for you. This is a long ladder. I might have to do it twice. Get, go three. Go three. Okay, okay. I'm going to go really quick then. $10 from uh, Mimetic who says, I can't find the exact transcript, but I'm requesting a recis uh, recitation of Junebug's rant about eating gravel. <laughs> we have $5 <laughs> from Backside of Water who says, it was Professor Plum in the billiard room with a wrench. What do you mean this isn't a game of Clue? <laughs> We've also got $10 from Steven who says, winning this board game really feels like a 50-50. <laughs> oh my gosh, I have a story. Um... <laughs> But luckily, we didn't get the teleport back down there. So what we are in now is what we're going to call the Unfriendly Neighborhood. I know, it's weird. The game's called Friendly, Minor Friendly Neighborhood. I don't know why this exists. Uh, John just doesn't like us. Nope, never did. <laughs> but we are about to enter the final boss of the game. I don't know if this final boss has a name, but It's called the Amalgam. Hopefully, we can take it out just like yeah. that. Nice. Yeah. So... The thing with this final boss <laughs> is if you kill it, while it is in its leaping animation, it will stay alive until it leaps. It can kill you. I have lost runs to it. I lost a world record pace run to it. Oh, no. I don't have the world record in Ooh, NMG. I would. <laughs> oh, that's spicy. <laughs> <laughs> and we are coming down to the last door of the game. Time is coming up when I press yes. Time. And the music currently playing does confirm that we got CEO. The music is different if we um, didn't. So this is how I personally verify. Um, this is an absolutely amazing game. I 100% recommend picking it up. Um, playing it through the first time, it's super, super charming. It's a survival horror game, but it's low on the horror. You're just going to have a lot of fun. Yeah, and it's on Steam Summer Sale. Is it? It is. I think so. It is on Steam Summer Sale. There we go. <laughs> so, hey, I, I, I want to take a quick moment. I just want to say it is uh, an absolute pleasure to see my game being run in GDQ. Uh, this is absolutely one of those developer dreams come true. And I'll, thank you very much for allowing me to come on in. Big applause for John, big, please. Big hand for John, absolutely. Uh, he's been... In in the speedrun community for this game since the demo came out he was the world record holder of the demo for a short amount of time for one day yeah, yep. like like a day uh, like but you day. know what i'm gonna hold that <laughs> <laughs> all right um we'll move on to shout outs because well the moot th enjoy the song while we do shout outs um for me just shout outs to everybody who helped me get here my parents completely helped make this happen. Everybody in the game who's helped me push further, uh, specifically people like Big Nono, who unfortunately couldn't be here. Um, amazing Yakuza Runner helped me get super good at this game. These two guys, they're dancing. I love it. it dangerous <laughs> finds a way to dance somehow. 
Okay, man, <laughs> if we're going to bring that up. <laughs> um, and just everybody involved, and John for being here. This is absolutely amazing. I've always wanted to do developer run. I think they're my favorite. Um, you guys have any shout-outs? I have Back here. We're in our heaven. <laughs> Uh, I would just say, you know, if, you, if you're looking to get into speedrunning and, and you're maybe nervous about getting into it, um, you know, just boot up a game and play through it. There's, there's nothing wrong with just getting going in your first run. Just play through it as quick as possible. Don't worry about getting every glitch possible. Don't worry about the bottom of the leaderboard because no matter how slow your run is, you're still going to be faster than the elevators in this hotel. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, if you're interested in running the game, we do have a Discord. It is on the speedrun.com uh, page there, so you can check it out. Uh, if you want to find me, I'm at Slighten101 on literally every social media in existence. Can we find you guys anywhere? Twitch.tv slash dangerous. Twitch.tv slash n3rd underscore squared. And uh, uh, you can find Ducky Shemansky on Twitter, and if you can spell it, you get to follow me. It's a great, <laughs> great pleasure. All right. Perfect. Um, thank you, everybody, and I hope you had a good time in our neighborhood.